Hey guys, in this session, we're going to be running through a lot of different surface types, so very similar to the curve session that we did, but this time looking at surfaces, different types of surfaces, how we create them, their parameters and inputs, and more, more importantly, what their output is, what we get from them. We're focusing on untrimmed surfaces. So these are surfaces that we understand as a coordinate system, a UV coordinate system. There's obviously lots of different ways to create different types of surfaces using Grasshopper. And the idea of this video is to be very scaleless in that we're not applying this to any scale of any description. These are just general ways of making different surfaces that you could apply to many different design problems that you might come across. So by just having a bit of an innate knowledge of some of the components and some of the ways that we can create different shapes and surfaces, uh, this is really going to help you in the future when you come to different uh, design problems. So yes, very general, but it will give you a foundation of knowledge that you can use in the future. So I hope you find all this useful and let me know if you have any questions. So uh, the first thing I'm going to create, actually, before we even forget any services, is just a, um, a curve. You're welcome to follow along with this. And uh, so pause the video here if you want to build these um, yourself. Um, but I will make sure the script is available for download. Again, if you just want to, to click through. It's more theory than actual practical kind of um, exercises. Uh, so yeah, we're we're creating a curve here because we're going to use this curve in a, for a lot of different surface type creations. So I'm going to use it as an example. So uh, so we'll just set this up once, and I'm using telepathy um, as a remote sender, so I can use this in lots of locations throughout my script. Um, but yeah, but we're we're using an interpolated curve, which is created from four points. These four points are spread along the x-axis using a series. So I have uh, the S value is going to be you know, how far they are along the S, which is the start value. Um, and then the divisions between them, uh, you know, what they, uh, they're evenly distributed um, just in this format. And then we're also changing the Z heights of them as well. So we can change the Z heights of these to you know, play with our curve. Um, and so this is what we're going to use for a lot of different surface types. Um, Actually, the first couple don't, uh, that I have don't use it, um, but we saw these before. Um, so these are in, again, we have surface and uh, all your surface creation tools will be in here. So freeform is quite a good one. We have this four point surface. Uh, end up using this quite a lot. And I think I already mentioned that, you know, if we remove one of these um, uh, inputs that we can actually create a triangular panels from this as well. We'll be looking at this later as well in our next session. Um, so, uh, but yeah, the, the Z heights of these can obviously change as well. Um, so we can create, um, uh, you know, planes or uh, you know, more hyperbolic surfaces, whatever. Uh, so really just defining those four points, isolating them out and creating a surface from them. Uh, fairly straightforward, this one. Uh, the other one is, again, another one that we already went through, but two points creating a rectangle and boundary surface is really good because it can create a uh, flat planar surface over, um, you know, taking using any um, boundary curve, so this is also a very handy one. Uh, our first reference uh, reference uh, curve is using yeah, again our curve. Where I'm just moving it in the um, in the y direction by a certain amount, and we're lofting these together. Uh, we've used loft before um, and already, so it's just using the same curve. So we get it's you know it's um, flat kind of in elevation, uh, so it's only curved in one direction. So we try some. Um, and the thing to point out with loft is that we have this loft options. And because we only have two curves lofting together, um, a lot of these loft options are not going to make um, any difference to how this loft works uh, because there's only two curves. So, But they're here for you to explore, take a look at. Some surface takes two curves, um, and I'm going to take our reference curve, and what I'm just doing is rotating this around my world x, y axis, uh, and, you, and these become the inputs for my sum surface. This is kind of like creating an amalgamation of them both. You can see it's aligned to my rotated curve, but not my reference curve. Uh, so you have to be kind of careful about how uh, the sum surface is, the way it calculates between two curves is, um, yeah, it, it kind of nuanced. I think if we flip these around, it will, yeah, it's obviously stuck now to the second one. Uh, so yeah, you just need to be careful with the order of your curves when you're using sum surface, but nice way of creating a, um, yeah, using two curves to just, quickly create a surface between them. Uh, we already looked at ref uh, uh, revol revolution as well. So we're going to take our curve. We have a axis line and we can revolve this around 360. Um, again, this is in radians. Um, or the input needs to be a domain in radians. 
So uh, I'd, I'd like to set this in um, degrees, translate it into radians, and then construct my domain. Uh, this is how I prefer to do it. You can see it kind of works better with my head and how it works, how, how I think about it. Um, the next one we have extrude. Um, again, these are all fairly straightforward. You know, we have our reference curve. We're extruding it in the y dimension, or the y axis, based on a parameter. So you know, for for a lot of these, we need multi there's multiple pieces of information. We need our reference curve and our directions, um, you know, to be able to to do this. The other extrude that is less often used but still very useful is um, extrude to point. Um, so I'm setting up a point here, um, just with two numbers and an x, y, z construct point, and we can extrude our curve to that point. Um, so you know, we can reduce the distance, move where it is in its axes. Uh, so this is quite good for making um, flat panels um, as well. If um, uh, if your reference curve or this the, the extruded curve is flat, you make fl uh, you know triangular panels and things. So this is quite helpful for those. Um, we have a pipe. Which we do use occasionally, um, but, and this is a, uh, I think probably counterintuitive actually that this is a um, untrimmed surface as well, um, but really it's it's exactly the same as a if you go to primitive, it's exactly the same as our cylinder. It's just a cylinder around a line. So I'm creating a line with uh, SDL line, which we learned about. It obviously has a length, and the, the start point is the world x y. Uh, we can change where that location is. Um, we have the length, um, and we are creating a essentially we're creating a cone, not a cone, a cylinder around it based on a radial dimension. Um, and we also have this uh, input as well to check the end or to cap the ends. So this is an option. So if we put a zero into this, we'll get um, no cap. So this is completely hollow. So it's an untrimmed surface. Um, if we put a one into this we're going to get a cap on the end and now now it's a b rep so this is multiple surfaces that are now connected or um, are related to each other based on um you know some edge parameters and how they're located with each other um, and i also have item two as well which gives me um curved uh, capped end caps um and so if i and th but these are both closed reps if i set this to zero it's an untrimmed surface because there's only one surface um so if i um explode so we can um, use that b rep components again um, uh, b, uh, sorry deconstruct rep not b rep components um, so i usually type in d e b for deconstruct rep um, and what this gives us it will give us our faces our edges um, and the any vertices of our uh, on our surface but obviously, when we when we have a brep, this is sorry, this is just working on a untrimmed, uh, just the one untrimmed surface. So we only have one surface. When we create a brep instead, we are now have three surfaces. We have an untrimmed surface and two trimmed surfaces, and we also have the edges and the vertices again. If I item these out, uh, the faces that is, um, I can see that my untrimmed, my first item is an untrimmed surface, and it's by cylinder. And my next item is going to be a um, is going to be the end caps, so we're just getting a flat disc, and this is known as a trimmed surface. There is a whole video on untrimmed versus trimmed surfaces, so I don't want to go into it here. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this was this was at the trimmed surfaces because this is a circle. And um, and if I just to finish this off, we'll do uh, the end caps are being um, the domed end caps. Or what does it say? Uh, round end caps. Um, I'm getting three untrimmed surfaces. So actually now this is still is now classed as an untrimmed surface. We can see the seam um, along here um, that you can hopefully you can see it in the video. Uh, we we can see the seam. So now we have a coordinate system. We can divide this end cap up as um, in the exact same way as we could divide uh, divide a facade up, for instance. So that, there's a difference between all these different end caps. We're just getting different geometries if we explode them. But the actual output of the pipe is always going to be either a brett or, if we don't have end caps, the untrimmed surface. Uh, we also have another pipe called variable pipe. Um, and so we can set a different radius. Um, again, I just have the same line, but we can uh, different parameters along this line. We can set a different radius. 
And so what this is asking for is, um, it's asking for a curve. The T input is asking for the list of parameters on that curve where we want different radiuses. So if I put this down to, say, uh, say three, um, we are going to have a different radius. Oh no, let's put it down to two. We're going to have a different radius at the, um, the start of the curve, which will be zero. Oops. The middle of the curve, which is 0.5, and the end of the curve, which is 0.1. I am, I'm using this graph mapper to just do, make this uh, slightly more fancy, but um, we can we can just, we can get rid of the graph mapper just for clarity and then bring it back in. Um, but we have our values, we are uh, remapping them from our source domain, so we know that the range is set from zero to one, so this is our source domain matches. And we now have the lower end, uh, so our zero parameter will have a radius of uh, the lower domain, and the upper value will be our upper domain. Um, and the upper radius will be our upper domain, and the uh, the radiuses that you can see coming out of the remap are here. So the the middle the middle parameter 0.5 will be mapped with a you know something that's essentially exactly halfway between uh, or halfway along our domain. So we get these tapering um, uh, tapering profiles. If we increase the amount of um, points that we have uh, and divisions along our um, um, along our line with our range, then yeah, we're gonna get the exact same thing. The, the actual, how that's divided up is a very uniform way. So it's actually not changing the geometry at all. It's just adding some uh, some um, more parameters in. Uh, and so yeah, I added this graph mapper in just so we can actually play with this a little bit more. Again, this is numbers between zero and one. So this is a really cool way of creating, you know, um, quite complex shapes, we have control over the numbers, we have control over the relationship of those numbers and obviously how many there are as well. And see, so it starts creating, just because of how this variable pipe works, uh, it starts creating a ridge pattern. Um, but yeah, we can, we can also uh, change again the cap type with our variable pipe. Um, so we have no caps, we have flat caps, and we have round caps um, to, uh, you know, to create these teardrop, teardrop geometries with the flat cap. Um, we also have a, uh, we'll, we'll look at some sweeps, um, but just to, because um, I don't think I mentioned it, but yeah, most of what we're looking at is in the freeform section. Uh, so we have our revolutions at the bottom, our extrudes and extrude points in the middle. We have our pipes, uh, and we're gonna look at our, our pipe and our pipe variable, and we're gonna look at our sweeps now. Uh, the loft and the boundary surfaces are at the top, and as well as the four point sources. So this is where all of these surface creation tools are kept. In the primitive, is where we've got our boxes and cylinders and spheres. Um, so yes, let's take a look at these sweeps because this is another very good way of creating nice geometry. Again, I'm taking my reference curve and I'm creating a polygon that is uh, aligned to my curve. You can see it here. Let's put a parameter in to change the radius, um, which is too big, uh, but yeah, we. So we're, we're taking our line, we're creating, we're using perpendicular frame to set the, um, the uh, to set a plane that is aligned at the zero parameter of our curve. We are using that to draw a polygon and we are sweeping that polygon along that reference curve. And we can change the, the radius. We can, uh, we obviously have done this before, but we can change how many segments are, um, our polyline has, so we can make square profiles. This is all defined by this reference curve. This could be a line, you know, wherever this curve comes from, this is gonna work exactly the same. Um, and I also set this up because I, I thought it just added to the this understanding. Um, we can we could create multiple, so per frame, I'm using a range to create a series of numbers between zero and one. My curve is reparameterized. and we understand it to be between zero and one. So I can create multiple planes along my, um, along my reference curve. Uh, and I'll just disconnect this for now, but we're creating multiple profile polygons and then we're sweeping multiple sections together. Uh, so this works with multiple, uh, sweep works with multiple sections. And I could create a different, um, we could have different the amount of sides that these polygons have. So I'm spanning at one end of my uh, curve, I have, uh, we can put this down to three, so I have triangles. And then this is slowly blending all the way up to um, uh, polygons that have 10 sides to them. And we could sweep all these along. It creates a really weird geometry, but it's, uh, it's a way of 
changing that profile as, as we move along the surfaces. Um, and, um, and you'll notice that this is a open rep. So again, breadth, boundary representation, multiple surfaces joined together. Um, so we could, um, again, we could explode this, uh, sorry, deconstruct breadth um, to find all of the faces. And these are all untrimmed faces. Um, so you can see these as uh, you know, panels essentially running down um, our, uh, our, our surface, kind of tapering based on this, uh, the amount of signs that it has. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to point this out that we can do multiple different sections along along the curve. And I just wanted to quickly add one in here as well that I forgot about. And this is uh, surface from four points. So if you go to surfaces and freeform, it's actually next to four point surface, the surface from points. Uh, and this is create a, create a nerve surface from a grid of points. So I'm using the square grid tool to create a grid of uh, squares um, and I'm extracting or uh, using the p-value I'm flattening it to create a list of points so this is just one list you know of, of, of points there's no um, there's no structure to this so you know if I uh, if I grab the item list item uh, I'll turn the um, I'll turn the uh, grid back on and let's just put 100 in here doesn't really matter um, so as we cycle through the there is no structure to this because I flattened it um, but there is an order to these points. So if I cycle through these, you can see that my point is uh, the point that I'm isolating. They're in order. And when we get to the end of the row, we'll skip to the next row. So we know that there are, along all of these, um, uh, along all of these rows, well, we have 10 cells in the, um, uh, along uh, the, the X or Y axis. I, you know, I'm, I'm setting these numbers here. Um, and so, but what actually happens is, um, let me just unflatten this for a second. Uh, you'll see why it was flattened because square grid, you know, it needs to understand the whole point. Um, but what's happening is we're, we have 10 cells in the X and the Y, but actually we create in those rows 11 points. So what uh, square, uh, surface from points needs, once we flatten this, this is one grid of points, it needs to know how many we have in our rows. And that's what this u value is. It's the number of points in the u direction. Um, and so it's we, uh, you could try and use this 10 value, but there's not enough points for it to be able to work out at what, uh, you know, work out the surface uh, because there isn't actually 10 points, there's 11 points. So what we need to do is we have a, um, a, a expression in here, which we sh I should write here so it's very clear. Uh, so it's basically 10 x plus one, so it's 10 plus one is always gonna be 11. So whatever this value is, it's always going to add one to it, and this is how many points do it have in the u direction. Um, and this surface from points is really good because can, we can work out how to, um, you know, create the uh, create that surface just from this set of points, and it creates it through it. Um, you know, for instance, we could, uh, you know, we could do a lot of translation, uh, uh, move translations to all of these points. Uh, so maybe I can move them in the z direction, and I'm just going to use uh, a series. Um, so they're increasing. So let's say uh, we're not increase. We don't want it to step size that much. Um, so our number slide of our series is going to be um, uh, our number slide of our series is going to be uh, um, you know say 0.3 or whatever this number is. And the count value is however many numbers that we need. So if I um, count the length of the list of points. Uh, so list length, um, I'm going to count how many points we have, and this is how many points that we need for our um, for our move vector. So if I put this in, we now have this cascading, uh, you know, the, 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 num the points are being moved incrementally up in their rows, and we get this kind of stacked effect. If we use these as our surfaces, or, you know, we can create our surface through this. Um, you know, we could, you know, because they're just being moved. So the, the square grid, the square, sorry, the surface from points can understand that grid of points and what we do with it. Um, um, we could, we could just randomly move them as well. Um, so let's randomly move them. We zero to one. The number of random values we need that length, that list length again. Uh, these are going to be my um, my random values uh, into my move, and the domain is set from zero to one, so it's not very high. Uh, but as you can see, we're creating this. Um, 
rippling effect over our surface just by you know selecting a grid of points doing something with them and rebuilding it as a surface so these are all the surfaces that i wanted to go through and how to create them i will make sure that the script uh, is below just as an example script so you can click through these in your own time if you want to go into a little bit more detail Again, this video is very general. These are just concepts of uh, how to create different services, and we're not really ex uh, looking into why and applying this to different situations. Um, but again, having this knowledge and having this foundational understanding will really help you in the future when you come to different design problems and how you can apply these different ideas to those problems. And it's worth just pointing out this direction of complexity again that we see and talk a lot about in the Technolearn forum, which is that simpler objects are there to create more complex objects. So points create curves and curves create surfaces. There are a few components as we've seen that can we can go straight from points to surfaces, but generally we're increasing complexity through points, curves to surfaces to create more high level objects. So in order to create our services, we need more basic information in order to be able to do that. And you can see that in all of the examples that we have shown. It could be an axis or a location or you know a curve, whatever. There's many different bit parts of information that we need to define that surface. And this is where that uh, computational thinking really focuses on, is how do we define those relationships and how do we find those initial conditions to create more complex objects. So services sit at the more complex end of this defined by the more simpler objects. So I hope you found this useful and informative. Um, thank you very much for watching and staying through this all the way through. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, write some comments and don't forget to follow our channel. If you're enjoying all this content, please reach out if you're interested in any of the coaching that we offer at Technolearn. Thanks very much guys. And I'll see you on the next session.